Hello and welcome to our all age worship here at the Faith Cafe. Now don't forget to press that red subscribe button if you enjoy the worship and to share it uh, online or with your friends. A thought for today. God is light and in him there is no darkness whatsoever. Let's start with a song. There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning, some dark and cold There is a spirit who brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes his home Carry your candle Run to the darkness Seek out the hopeless Confused and torn Hold out your candle For all to see
pray particularly for those right now who are struggling with anxiety and who are, um, feel a little bit out of control, who are genuinely worried about your health or the health of loved ones. Maybe you're, you're concerned about finances, about the future, about your job. Maybe you're concerned about being isolated all of these, that they are valid concerns. And if you know that's you, just maybe put a hand on your, on your heart right now. And Lord Jesus, we pray that you, the great I am, you would bring peace in the storm. That you would come to us, a peace that's beyond understanding, and also, I want us to pray for those who are struggling with guilt right now. Maybe guilt about being anxious or guilt about doing better than others or guilt about something that's happened. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would break the power of guilt. You died on the cross to take our guilt away. You did not come to condemn the world but to save the world. And Lord, I particularly, I break the power of false guilt, where the enemy whispers in our ear, uh, lies, you shouldn't be like this, you shouldn't do that, God is too far away. Remember that picture that Andy gave? It's not our goodness, it's not our air miles, it's not, whatever, it's not our achievements. It's because we know him. I'm with him. And therefore I have access. Lord, bring peace and bring freedom to our troubled hearts. And for those who are struggling physically with health, I just ask you also, if you can, just put your hand on your heart. It's symbolic. And Lord Jesus, by your spirit, would you bring healing and restoration. We pray that you heal broken bodies. Fill us with your presence. The curtain has been torn in two. 
and we can be in the midst of your presence now. There's nothing that separates us from your love. And the Lord wants to give you peace and he wants to give you wisdom. We give ourselves to you. You're the gate. You're the the doorway. You're the protection. You're the entrance. But you're also, Lord, the good shepherd. And though we walk through the valley, the dark valley, we fear no evil because you are with us. And Lord, we thank you that we don't stay in the dark valley. We walk through with you because you lead us. And for all of us, Lord, we ask that by the power of your spirit and because of what you did on the cross when you died in our place and rose again to break the power of death, we pray, Lord, that you would right now break the the power of isolation over any of us. We commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if I can sing this song with the right amount of feeling. I just know this message can't be wrong We can open up the world to hope and healing When we all just love more We just love more When we all love every day Every breath The world we live in crumbles all around me People everywhere awake at night I'm so lucky that somehow you found me You helped me see my darkness turn to light When I just love more When I love more If only I could love Every day, each minute
reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I'm reading from 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while walking in the darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us. Welcome to today's Take Heart. 
it has been quite a week, hasn't it? Um, overwhelming in lots of ways here in England. We're back into lockdown. The, uh, the United States of America is obviously um, struggling to elect a president at the moment. And uh, internally, I think loads of us, I know I am, are finding things very, very tough. Where do we look? For hope, for direction, for guidance. One of the things that I um, sometimes think about is the fact that the Israelites, when they were in the wilderness back in the day, they lived in tents and they had this such an obvious way to be guided because God was present with them. He was a pillar of cloud during the day and he was a pillar of fire at night. And whenever the pillar moved, they moved. And whenever it stopped, they stopped. And I just think, oh man, wouldn't that be great to have that as a as a way of being guided today? Just the pillar of fire says, go this way, vote this way, do this. Um, but we got something so much better. So Jesus in John chapter 8 verse 12 says this, I am the world's light. No one who follows me stumbles around in the darkness. I provide plenty of light to live in. We don't have a pillar of fire. We have a person of light and his name is Jesus. And when he said that, he was saying it at the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a feast where they literally camped in tents and remembered their time in the wilderness. And they would have lit a massive fire in the temple and that was up on a hill. And so in, in the darkness, as they sat in their tents, they would have looked up to the hill and seen the fire and thought to themselves or meditated or given thanks for the fact that God was faithful to them in their wilderness and led them through. Jesus in that context is saying, I am the light of the world. Don't look to a pillar of fire anymore, look to me. And for me, it's just been a reminder in the midst of all of the confusion and all of the questions I have um, and that I, my, my head is buzzing with, um, just to, to hear the voice of my Lord again say to me, come close, Andy, seek me. These are days where you've got to really seek to follow me closely. What I find is when I'm trying to work it out, I, I don't get anywhere or I get to the wrong place often. But um, what, what I've uh, discovered is when I come to him daily and I try and listen to him, uh, talk with him, um, see things, see situations, see people in the way that he sees them, even though some of those decisions that I have to make off the back of that wouldn't be instinctively what I would have naturally chosen, that, that we end up going in the right direction when that's how we do it. And there's this famous proverb, Proverb chapter 3, um, verses 5 and 6, which say, uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I'll just read it to you from the message because I love the way it puts it. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try and figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the darkness, the light of the world says, if you follow me, you won't stumble. And so for us, the response is, all right, let's, let's pay real attention to following him closely, to following him well in these days. And then off the back of that, we, that doesn't have to be abstract. So when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, that sounds a little bit sort of up in the sky, but actually the gospels, the stories of his life show us what the light of the world does with his time. You know, he's wandering around with a beard and sandals and, 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 and being present among us and shows us what he does. And so the next thing that happens after Jesus makes this statement is he, he comes across a man who's been blind from birth. And when that happens, this is at the start of John chapter nine. When that happens, the disciples try and start this kind of big theological discussion. And they say to him, why is this man blind? Uh, another way of putting that is, why is he suffering? And it's a question people, you know, all of us probably still ask today. But they say, why is he blind? And then they suggest a couple of reasons that would have been commonly given, perhaps, in kind of the Jewish debates of the time. It's because he sinned. It's maybe because his parents have sinned. And I just, I love Jesus' response. He just says, neither of those things. And he says, I'll tell you what, though. This is a great opportunity for the glory of God to be displayed. And he heals him. And Tom Wright, in his uh, book on John's Gospel, he says, this reminds me of 
Genesis, the beginning of Genesis, where um, we read the story of creation and at the very start, there's just this dark, formless, chaotic void and God is faced with chaos. He doesn't at that moment spend his time describing the chaos. He doesn't waste time analysing the chaos. He doesn't start a debate about who's to blame for the chaos. Do you know what he does? He creates light. And after that, a whole new world. And Jesus in this moment doesn't enter into a discussion, a debate, an analysis around why this is happening. What he does is he heals the guy. He creates light. And after that, a whole new life for him. And uh, in John's gospel, the motivation for miracles, but you know, um, there's six, seven signs in John's gospel. This is sign number six. The motivation for the signs, the miracles of Jesus in the gospel are glory. The glory of God will be displayed. And that's interesting because when you contrast that with the other three gospels, the main motivation of Jesus there is compassion. So he sees a widow whose son has died. He's moved with compassion and he just has to act. He, he comes across someone who's, who's a leper and uh, Jesus has moved again with compassion and he heals the man. And that's his motivation. Um, and it can seem almost like, are these, are these two contradicting each other? John says the reason for the miracles is that the glory of God would be displayed. And the other three gospels tell us it's all because of Jesus's compassion. There's no contradiction. They're just two ways of looking at the same thing because the glory of God is his compassion. The majesty, the beauty, the might, the, the wonder, the full display of the glory of God is his kindness. There's never a moment, I think, where God's glory is more beautifully displayed than in these moments of kindness, where you see Jesus reach out to a man who from birth, and by the way, this is the only person in the Gospels, the only sufferer in the Gospels, we're told, who has his condition from birth. The man who's blind from birth suddenly begins to see for the first time. Jesus reaches out in compassion and kindness and literally brings light and brings new life to him. And so for us, uh, in the midst of all the crazy, all the chaos that's happening, you know, one of the questions that I've been asking is, what do I do and how do I live well? It starts with knowing the light of the world is Jesus. And so I just got to follow him closely and stick near to him. What does Jesus spend his time doing in a world full of darkness? He spends his time creating light. What does the light look like? In this instance, and in many other occasions throughout his life, the light looks like compassion and it looks like kindness. How do we live well through these days? We continue to be kind. We continue to be compassionate. We continue to display the glory of our God in a dark world by being love to the world around us and to the people around us. And when I hear that, I think, yeah, that does make sense. But the other part of me thinks, I just haven't got anything left. You know, I'm knackered. It's been a grueling, brutal seven, eight months now. And I'm tired and I'm anxious and I'm fearful and and that's okay. What we do is we bring it to Jesus because we're not the light of the world. He's the light of the world. And that means he's kind to us. It means he has compassion on us. And we can come to him just as we are and say, Lord, I want to do this. I want to be patient. I want to be loving. I want to be gracious. I want to respond, not out of anxiety and fear, um, but out of a, a willingness to show who you are to the world and what you've done for me. Would you help me, Jesus? And his answer is always, of course I will. Step down.
today by our all age worship if you haven't already pressed the red subscribe button then please do so as it helps our algorithms uh, the more subscribers we have uh, and don't forget uh, that uh, one of our team Angus has set up uh, the faith cafe chat group on Facebook so have a look at that sometime and uh, you can chat to one another despite the restrictions of lockdown. Let's finish with a blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen.